Well, it's fair to say that if my next guest had learned how to drive a car ever, we might never have heard of Jacques Villeneuve. She's a housewife, megastar, chanteuse, swami, spin doctor, polymath, and icon. She's been described as, and I quote, a fragrant Antipodean dowager, the diva of bad taste, and Australia's revenge for penal colonization. <laughs> I could go on, but I won't. Whatever I say, nothing could prepare you for Dame Edna Everidge. <laughs> I think I'm overdressed. <laughs> I brought you a little present, Jack. A comb. I don't think it's going to be very useful. <laughs> <laughs> He's looking just a little bit windswept. <laughs> Why not, you angel? Uh, hello, Parky. Uh, hello. It's so good to see you again. It's been a long time. It actually. has. It really has. Some of our early shows are legendary, aren't they, <laughs> they are legendary, yes, sir. I've been taken off them, but you're still there. <laughs> no. No, Go let's just catch up. We've got a lot of catching up to do now. We um, have. Now, what about uh, your, your manager? Just rearranging my petals. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is, that, is it any... <laughs> We both live in the fast lane, <laughs> we do. Yeah, I can see that, yeah. <laughs> Jack, and you're much younger than I remember. <laughs> oh, sorry, I lost memory. The man who discovered Twiggy, do you remember? He discovered Twiggy. He discovered Twiggy. That's Justin de Villeneuve. Just... <laughs> Justin de Villeneuve. That's not Justin de Villeneuve. Isn't it? No. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he discovered it... twigging and then took up racing driving. <laughs> you would be sorry. He'd be a very old racing driver. <laughs> he would have. <laughs> but Justin was Twiggy's manager. Yes. He was. She doesn't speak of him now. No, she doesn't. Now, talking of managers, what about your manager, Mr. Humphreys? Oh. I don't speak of him either, I'm afraid. He's. Oh, apparently. You have a manager, I suppose. What? Him like a hawk. Oh, they're dangerous, huh? I know, I remember it wasn't that long ago. It's terrible, Michael. What's up? I trusted that Barry Humphreys and he, <laughs> he helped me early in my career. He was a talented but smooth talking person. And he was wearing a short sleeved shirt and I saw these scars on his arm. I thought, oh, he's been doing something a bit silly. And then I realised what had happened. The drawer of the till had slammed on his wrist. <laughs> He's got his hand in my money. Oh. Well, look at the figures yourself, and I advise you too, Michael. Don't trust anyone in the matter of your own money. Did you, did you sack him? Did you get rid of him? Well, I, I didn't. I've retained him. I've got him working for me. He's going to pay back every penny he took from me. I put him into my new show, and I've given him lots of rather demeaning little task to do and I'm going to get every shilling back from that possum I am. Hey, be careful, you know, you don't want to have anything like that. I mean, you think to yourself, when you're going speeding around that racing track, Justin, and you're going around there <laughs> and you think this is the major risk, the risk lies elsewhere, the risk is in your emotional life. That's where the That's big accidents life. can occur, <laughs> darling. I adore this little fellow, isn't he lovely? <laughs> and you know, you've given yourself a bit of a rinse, but it's not a feminine. <laughs> <laughs> it isn't. Um, when I learned that Barry Humphreys was delving into my finances, yes. I had a total emotional collapse. Yes. And I had to go and I went into a place, you know, Oh, yes, I did. And I had to let it all out. I went to Megastars Anonymous. <laughs> it's something I founded. You almost qualify for it, now. <laughs> it's where people who live in the life... Li li they live their lives in a goldfish bowl can go and meet their peers, and it's totally anonymous. I shouldn't have actually mentioned it. And I saw you there the other night. <laughs> I did. 
Hillary Clinton was there last night, bless her, and she looked happy. She did. She said, oh, it's a relief, Edna, you know. It is a relief. She said, I never thought I'd say this to you. She said, but I never thought I'd say to another woman, you know, what a relief, I found lipstick on his collar last night. Little Sean Connery there the other night, <laughs> going on about his knighthood. He was, I've actually never seen Sean flounce before, but he did. And wearing a kilt, you can flounce. You know? <laughs> After all, he's deserved one. Look at all the work he's done for Scottish independence, trying to get rid of the Queen. And how does she reward him? Not giving him a knighthood. It's unfair. <laughs> it is unfair. Okay, you're from Canada, aren't you? Correct, yeah. Doors, have you been there? <laughs> no, I haven't been to Canada. Mostly, it's beavers and mounties. <laughs> Pretty well. <rough. laughs> and Donald Sutherland. Remember him? I do remember mm. Donald Sutherland, yes. yes. <laughs> Bit of a seminal and pivotal interview with him. Yes. Years ago. Uh, yeah, indeed, I, I remember, remember that. That's yes. coming back to him. Mm, it is indeed. I never forget. Don't touch your face. Wow. <laughs> I'm sorry, I shouldn't say that, should I? <laughs> but you know, since you got rid of your clipboard, you've been fiddling with yourself again. <laughs> and you have. You have. When you had. Uh, Michael, I adore this man, don't get me wrong, viewers and studio audience, but. and little Justin, but I mean. <laughs> I, <laughs> When he had his clipboard, at least a, I think a man like you <laughs> needs a clipboard on your lap because you can rearrange yourself behind it. You can. You can wear it. I never <laughs> thought of that. No, you haven't got his, his clipboard was a focal point for him. What? No, he hasn't got it. He does a bit of the lobe tugging again. <laughs> a little bit of the nostril flicking. Well, he... know, I was watching you the other night. <laughs> Here you go. I was watching you. And I... <laughs> you see? Oh, and I thought, you know, he... I thought, I never realised you were a mason. I thought you were sending <laughs> signals. Or perhaps you're buying futures, you know, when you're sending little messages buying pork bellies. <laughs> At the who, same time who, as doing the show. Who, who, you, who was on? Who was my guest? <laughs> well, I, look, I loved it. I, because you had Scylla and ah, Lily yeah. last week. I adored them. I'm, of course, I'm a big fan. Quick-witted and lovely little Lily. And you bring out, you see, you're a master. You're unique. All the other interviews. Done any of the other ones? Don't bother. This is the man. <laughs> Because he's polite and he listens. There's a person called Jeremy Isaacs, you know? <laughs> he hides in the dark. You never see him. <laughs> That's why I keep mistaking him for Michael Winner whenever I bump into him. <laughs> he doesn't like that either, I can tell you. But he doesn't listen. You know, you could tell him you were a serial killer and he'd say, and what are your plans for the future? <laughs> you know, he's not listening. Now, he could do with a clipboard. He's too, he relies on the clipboard and not his ears, as you do. And little Scylla, he brings things out of people. You know, I admired Scylla for years, but I didn't realise that she came from humble origins. I didn't realise that. No. Or that she was a, a, had a rudimentary education. I didn't know that. And another thing, she was so nice, wasn't she? Wasn't she gorgeous she was and nice, lovely? Yes. And you brought that out because I know people who've worked with her for years and they've never mentioned that. <laughs> never. Never. Michael. They've never mentioned that side of you, Scylla. <laughs> I love now, you. I tell you what we, we should do, actually. We should talk a little bit about the new uh, show you're coming to. And also, I should ask you about... Come on, talking... new show. You've got to come. I'll give you some tickets. <laughs> She doesn't listen much, does she? Guildford. <laughs> Guildford and then Plymouth and then Bradford. Oh. And, oh, you touched your nose again. And, uh, <laughs> and then, as you're worried about the time, but then the Haymarket in London. The and Haymarket. that's all I'll say, but it's a musical and it's based on my life. And it's new and it's exciting and it's, it's makes me a very happy woman. Oh, well, I'm, it, it makes me happy to, to see you so happy. But I'm happy because what? they're putting me in the dome. In the Millennium Dome? <laughs> in the dome. <laughs> Mr. Mandelson is a friend of my son, Kenny, and they've got together. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny's gay, isn't he? 
He's what? Gay. What a horrible thing to say. I thought he was. I'm sorry. Why can't you call my son and his friend Clifford <laughs> by what they are? What are they? Flatmates. <laughs> But they've got this figure in the dome. It's sexless, isn't it? Asex Sex asexual. 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 Isn't that stupid? Ever heard of anything more ridiculous? <laughs> I mean, you can enter it, can't you, presumably? Yeah. <laughs> yes. I mean, 50%. I mean, who wants to enter something when you don't quite know what it is? <laughs> I suppose it'll have a couple of entrances. It'll appeal to everybody. <laughs> and there'll be a ramp for the, for the disabled, won't there? <laughs> <laughs> no, what I meant to say to you as well, of course, was, and I inquire about was was Madge. I know that uh, Madge. Yes, Madge, your bridesmaid. He doesn't want to meet her. Uh, Madge, Madge was the bridesmaid at, at Dame Edna's wedding many, many years ago, and has not. She, she saw something unutterable at the wedding, and has not mentioned a word about it ever since. Not no, spoken. She's silent. Since. She's silent. She's in New Zealand. Uh, well, uh, she's loitering somewhere. <laughs> she's probably over there somewhere. Shall we see it, Madge, shall we? What? Shall we bring her on? Oh, well, if you must, you'll depress people, but still bring her on. <laughs> I think she must be over here. Madge! They want you on here, darling. Madge! Madge! Michael Parkinson, an old friend of mine, Madge. This is Madge. Hello, Madge. Nice he doesn't to... speak, but I've activated a T-shirt. Listen to this. Listen. I love you, Parkinson. Isn't that nice? Well, that's yeah. as close as you get. Sit down there. <laughs> and don't look at him in your lustful way. <laughs> she's undressing him with her eyes. That's what she's doing. I, did I read somewhere that Madge was to be in a, in a movie? Well, she wanted to be in the Titanic film. She... <laughs> Do you know this woman? She's such a fib. And did you see the Titanic? Not yet. No, oh, no. You need to allow a bit of time to see it. Well, she... She claimed she was on the Titanic. She was. Ah. Well, she looks like something you find at the bottom of the sea, doesn't she? <laughs> Talk about a sunken chest. <laughs> She's poor woman. She's very frail, isn't she? And frail? Yes. Strong as an ox. <laughs> <Is> she... <laughs> Press ups on one arm oh, every morning. No. <laughs> oh, yes. no nonsense. Don't you right. worry, this minx. <laughs> she goes out at night raging with other New Zealand women. Ah. Oh, yes. And of course she's pierced multiply. <laughs> <laughs> when when there's a high wind, she whistles. She <laughs> Now, shall we bring on? You've mentioned New Zealand quite a few times. Uh, our very special guest tonight, so the new, well known New Zealander. I mean, the first lady of New Zealand, as you are the first lady no of, of Australia. No question. No question at all. But in the meantime, may I thank you very much, Dame Edna Everett. Thank you, Michael! laughing at you. <laughs> you were so life. funny. Weeping, I've got little tears in my eyes. She lies. <laughs> uh, some more songs are coming through and I'm learning a new one now. There's uh, quite a nice story of the whole new thing about, you know, Phantom having a son and things like that. So it's all going to be very intriguing. I wonder if the son's called Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Is he gay? Oh, what's up? No. I hope. <laughs> really? <laughs> I hope that this show doesn't open too soon because my show will take all the business away. <laughs> well, we are dealing with a lord here. I've been told the Baroness is in the pipeline for me. Oh, 
Oh, well, you're creating your own now, I think. Baroness Edna. Well, <laughs> need to stop there. I could need live with <laughs> <laughs> What about the President of the Republic of Australia, of course? That would be wrong. Well, they've it. offered that to me, too. Yeah, of the course. President of the Republic. There's a horrible politician called Les Patterson. Oh, you heard of him? Yes. Oh, yes. He's him. been named as a big contendant. My son came to see him. He was shocked. Your son? Yeah, I know. I, I took him. I thought, this is a little bit of cultural, you know. He should know about Australia and New Zealand and things like that. And I brought him. Uh, and well, Thomas, and he, he, I said, what do you think, Tom? He says, very rude. Well, New Zealanders are easily <laughs> shocked. <you know>? Yes, <laughs> I know. Well, it's such a small country. Now the lights have gone out. We, you know, they said, the last person out of New Zealand turn off the lights. It's happened. <laughs> yeah. but but we adore it. Uh, I'm not a New Zealander. My country. <laughs> I adore it. And you... And a little bit, I'm getting a tiny bit probing and loving here at the same time. Oh, probe away. But there's a bit of, <coughs> little bit of Maori in you, isn't there? Oh, yes, there's quite a lot of Maori in me. Well, oh. uh, you know, the Maori. Have you heard of them? <laughs> they, they're like Eskimos, only they're New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> they, cannibals, yes. I well, know. they I did say have, that. don't say the word, oh, but they did have a, unusual dietary <laughs> customs. It was Tell fish. me, do you ever look at anyone and feel a while? peckish? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you look at him and think, hey, well, I could gobble him up. Well, you're looking tasty. Out. Looking very tasty, isn't uh, he? What it seems to me we're going to finish with a, with a musical... Uh, well, a momentous musical occasion. Jacques, you, you're, you're a singer, aren't you? You're going to be a pop singer, aren't you? <laughs> you are. I make noise at home. You do? No, but you, you've been having lessons from Mike Oldfield, haven't you? The tube that bells that go. Yeah, I came across him when, uh, because I was skiing in Switzerland and he was in the same spot, so I uh, went out for a bite to eat and then gave me a quick lesson. And you, you're going to make a pop record? That's very far-fetched. <laughs> <laughs> I just thinking about all this time, the only one who can't sing, you know. Okay. We should have brought him in on, on our little song. We, we, we oh, our song. Uh, our song. Oh, you've got a song. Well, have you got a song? I mean, this is going to be, it's a momentous musical occasion, this, and we should be privileged to be part of this, because it's historical, to say the least. Well, hysterical. Uh, oh, uh, hysterical. Histor it's hysterical. It's <laughs> hysterical. <laughs> so, our, our friend, Mr. Holloway, our marvellous musical director. Laurie Holloway. Lo Loza Holloway. Is plus, he lurking there? He's lurking, plus band. Well, we, 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 we said we wanted to dress accordingly for the song, and I said I'd wear something simple. Well, and <laughs> this is the simplest frock Dame I've Edna. got. <laughs> Look at this lovely bee. You want to stroke my bee? <laughs> Very nice. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Lacquer, I'm afraid. <laughs> Right. Would you like, therefore, to make your way across there while I you introduce you? You know these your... Gladys? Yes, there's Did one. Did you know they're, they are bisexual hermaphrodites, Gladys? Are they really? They don't know who they are? Well, I don't know what they're up to in those vases. <laughs> All right. Floral <laughs> sex, I wouldn't oh, be surprised. Right. Tunes is the moment, right. <laughs> well... As I, was, as I was saying, there have been many significant and unusual musical unions on this show over the years. One thinks of Menuhin and Grappelli, Larry Adler and Itzhak Perlman, Cliff Richard and Placido Domingo. But this surely tops a lot. For the very first time, and probably the last, the two great dames of the Antipodes doing justice to that musical masterpiece, I always say hello to a flower. To a leaf, a plant, a tree And I'm always nice to a flower For they're perfectly lovely to me I always say hello to a flower Hello, hello, hello <laughs> I totally ignore the crashing ball who lives next door For her conversation silly Yet I never snub a lily I'm always glad to see a gladio <laughs> A man about a glad You can stand next to a bush And you'll never feel one push Flowers are refined and light And I've never seen a pansy fight Yes, I talk to bees And I talk to birds But they leave me quite at a loss Leaves on a pillow, yet I positively trust 
Next week, my guests are the leader of the Tory party, William Hague, Motors, Mr. Motormouth, Jeremy Clarkson, rock star Brian Adams, and the irresistible Joan Collins. Until then, from all of us here, a very good night. Good night. <laughs>